This is a follow-up to the video I just recently released about the UK election and how the Tories, again, not my opinion, look at the stats, have systematically decimated the middle and working classes of the motherland and how Jeremy Corbyn's your best chance in 40 years to reverse that damage, which was then masterfully rebutted in the comments section with Jeremy Corbyn's a communist. He has a laugh with the terrorists, in it. I could beat him in an arm wrestle and if that's the case, how's he gonna pull out a Brexit if his arm's broken? That was 99% of the rebuttals, usually followed with the sentiment that I should do my research, which made me wonder, Mr. Jackson, is the UK also staring at the man in the mirror? To which his spirit replied, no, they're just staring at the mirror. Because what I learned from that video is that those that oppose Corbyn seem to think that your population being denied a livable wage. While the cost of housing has risen 1,200% since the 80s, causing one of the biggest real estate bubbles in history, created single-handedly by the Conservatives, who also, just by the by, also caused the global financial crisis. But hey, nobody's perfect. That should all be overlooked because Theresa May's going to get you a better deal on Brexit. Which from what I can gather they think because of this sign. Now that's research. If cardboard's that effective on the British public, imagine how much of the population thinks that Fruit Loops contains real fruit. Seeing as there's always at least one mum in UK wife swap sitting in a chair yelling, Shut it Stacey, I'm watching the chatty man! 50% minimum. So while I don't want to fault your extensive analysis of looking at a Conservative Party slogan, you know what that sign conveniently excludes? And I'm not jumping to conclusions here, it's probably just a spatial issue, but... Jeremy Corbyn has a four decade long history of opposing EU friendly reform, was clearly dragging his feet in a stay vote, while Theresa May unequivocally, fervently supported a stay vote, and yet that's the horse you're betting on for the best deal on Brexit. Well, may I just say, nay. Huh? Like all the worst punters, you choose to focus not on their track record, but on this gut feeling you have that Yeah, she's a fighter alright, she'll get a better deal cause she's tough. So tough she refused to debate Jeremy Corbyn. Grr. But let's assume, like supporters of this extra large Halloween mask clearly have, that she really is a regular bruiser. She just has a phobia of anyone who looks like Santa Claus. Even if she was tough, which again, boo. You realise that the process of getting out of the EU isn't that you have to fight a Jabberwookie, right? It's a negotiation process. And as such, Theresa May, with all of her tough talk, straight in the eyes of her fans. She's united Europe against her, guaranteeing an even harder path for the UK in its negotiations. As a result, it's not an issue of whether or not she'll get you a worse deal on Brexit. She already has. And yet sun worshippers, to remain consistent with their 14-year-old Chinese girl Olympian-level mental gymnastics, have landed the perfect logical backflip, as the rhetoric they were cheering for just a few months ago when it came out of the mouth of the world's most hilarious thumb has been completely reversed. They now miraculously think it's better to have a rotten deal than no deal. I don't know why! Maybe the Sandra at the mall once said they didn't deserve any toys and then proceeded to spank them, but whatever the reason, they appear to think that Jeremy Corbyn will get them a bad deal on Brexit because he refuses to sign a bad deal on Brexit. They instead want a deal so rotten it'll make even Johnny Rotten say, Fuck me, the Tories have made me name look like it's a fucking gimmick. As Theresa May supporters now claim they want to hold Brexit. I'm guessing purely because it's got the word hard in it. They obviously haven't read into what a hard Brexit entails because a hard Brexit means you leave the single market. You don't want to leave the single market, to use my favourite Cockney expression, you fucking muppet. Not even Theresa May wants to leave the single market, as outlined in her private speech to Goldman Sachs, where she stated that doing so will cost the UK hundreds of billions of pounds in lost investment in trade, hundreds of thousands of jobs, exclude the British from business opportunity in the world's most powerful economic bloc, and yet you think she's pushing for the best deal on Brexit when not even she thinks she's pushing for the best deal on Brexit. Except for when it comes to her donors. Oh yes, because according to Theresa May's hard Brexit, all of Britain will be removed from the single market, placing you at a massive disadvantage if you want to study, travel or do business in Europe, unless you're a bank. Why, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that making a special exemption for the financial sector are the exact actions of a bunch of bought and paid for by the banking industry puppets pretending to be a government would take who are only interested in getting the best deal for those that contribute the most to their election campaigns and to be damned with the rest of the population. But thankfully, there's this piece of cardboard that assures me that no, that's too cynical. Yeah, but Corbyn supports the IRA and Hummus. Which, due to how superficial your analysis on Brexit was, I'm assuming you think 
think that because he has a beard. So let's just call his facial hair Exhibit A, and we'll call Exhibit B, how about you fucking read? Because guess who else had a little chat with the IRA? That's right, your gilf wet dream Maggie Thatcher. And as for Hamas, stop staring at the sun, it's burning your eyes. Read his comments, they basically amount to him saying that Hamas needs to be part of the peace process. I don't think that's supporting terrorism. You know what I think does support terrorism? Theresa May giving billions of pounds of weapons to Saudi Arabia because guess where those weapons go? Hint, it's not to a furnace where they're melted down into a giant peace statue. Nope, those weapons go to, as George Bush used to say, the tourists. So maybe, if you really cared about having a government in power that doesn't support international terrorism, you'd be voting for the man that condemned May for giving military aid to the Saudis and vowed to stop it. Because you can put all the words you like in Jeremy Corbyn's mouth, but you know what really talks? Money. If you really cared about British lives being lost, then maybe you wouldn't be voting for the party that severely cut hospital funding and social services to the poor, i.e. let thousands of British citizens die so that bankers could continue earning 260 times the wage of the average worker even after they tank the global economy. After all, it's a mammoth task, it deserves a mammoth wage. And maybe, just maybe, if you really cared about preventing terrorist attacks, you'd be voting for the man that before the Manchester bombings vowed to put an extra 10,000 police on the streets, instead of the woman who cut funding to the police force in Manchester despite being warned it would increase the risk of a terrorist attack. Just a thought.